Welcome to the new series on building a web application using Ruby without Rails. The goal behind this series is to understand how web applications work in general and uh, also to understand the benefits of web application frameworks such as Ruby on Rails. We'll use Ruby for our programming language, we'll use Puma as application server and uh, we'll also need Rack for a bunch of useful middleware so we don't need to write everything from scratch. We'll start with uh, initializing our project using bundler, bundler. So run bundle init. That adds a gem file in the project. We'll need two gems, Puma and uh, Rack. So we installed the gems using bundle add command. The nice benefit of that command is it also runs bundle install after installing the gem. So we don't need to uh, do that extra step. So that's all we need for now. Next we'll add the application. So create a file named config.ru. It stands for rack up. Don't worry about the extension for now. And let's say rack compliant application. So let's add a class because it follows the rack interface we need a call method that takes the HTTP request in the ANV hash and it returns an array containing the status code the headers and the response headers is a hash and it contains content type to text html response is an array containing a string and to run our application we'll use the rack dsl so run app.new and that's all we need for our application to run the application we need we need to launch the server so run the puma command and um, if we go to this URL, we see hello world. Now if, we, if I make a change here and reload the application, it doesn't show the change, reflect the change here. For that we need to stop the application and run it again and it shows up now. It can get quite tedious if we want, if we have to stop and restart the application each time we make a change. So for that, we'll use a rack middleware called rack reloader. So before I add that, let's just sub clean things by moving the application to a new file. I'll require the application here. We also need rack. And we'll use the rack DSL method called use to use that middleware. And we'll set the cooldown period to zero. So our changes are reflected instantaneously. Now restart the application. And let's make a change here. If I reload the page now, you can see our uh, our changes are shown here. There's one more thing I want to change. So if we look at the network tab and reload the page, you can see there are right now two requests are getting made to our backend. One is for this main document, which is getting the response that we set here. And the other is the request for the favicon icon that browser sends and it's also getting the response that we set but we don't want that so we want to actually respond with a icon instead of the application html so how do we do that for that we need the need to use the env hash 
because that contains the URL and URL path and all other information. So we can use that to differentiate between these two requests. So let's just first inspect what's in the env hash. So I'll use the JSON library and I will return JSON and instead of the response I'll use env.toJSON. So we are re re returning the env hash as response. So if I reload the page, here's the env hash and if we check the response for the favicon.ico you can see the path info key contains the string favicon.ico whereas the main request its path info is just a root path so we can use the path info key to figure out which request is belongs to the favicon ico and return the different response based on that so let's do that first i'll undo all my changes And uh, I want to return a different response here. So I will return status 200. Headers can be the same. And uh, here I want, instead of icon, just to keep things simple, I'll just return a string. And I want to return this response only if the uh, request belongs to favicon. So we can use env path info key equals favicon. And it needs to be an array. All right. So if I come back and reload the page, you can see our main document received the correct response and the favicon received the favicon string and we can replace it with the icon in future but right now we are returning different response based on the request so for that we can we used env hash all right so we have a working web application right now and uh, in the next vid videos in this series we'll take a look at how to set up a proper mvc structure similar to a rails application using models views and controllers we'll also see how to set up tests for our application and a uh, bunch of other useful stuff such as connecting to database and stuff like that so i hope that was useful and you learned something new if you have any questions let me know in the comments see you in the next video bye now